Hello everyone, welcome to Classroom 2.0 Live for Saturday the 10th of September, our first show in September. Our topic today is Classroom Resources to Enhance the Use of Technology. Your show hosts are Peggy George, I'm Lori Moffitt, Tammy Moore, and Paula Noggle. Thanks to Tammy for doing closed captioning for us. Our special guest today is Heidi Samuelson. I'm going to turn the mic over to Peggy, who will now introduce Heidi as well as ask the newbie question. Well, thank you, Lori, and a big welcome to all of you that are joining us today. You are in for such a treat. As all of you know, I am a huge advocate for online learning, especially when it's free. And I try to participate in as many webinars, hangouts, and virtual conferences as I can to meet and learn from amazing educators. We also have a fabulous advisory team of teachers that meet regularly with me to brainstorm great presenters we'd like to have on our shows. And they are a tremendous source of inspiration with some amazing PLNs. And that is how I met our special guest today, Heidi Samuelson. And uh, I met her in a couple of places. And you know when someone keeps popping up on your radar, you know that's someone you want to be connected with and following. I met her in EdCamp Global and in the Not at ISTE community where we did tons of creating and sharing this summer during the conference. And I am just so thrilled to have her with us to share some of her amazing tips and tools that she uses with her students and colleagues. You are definitely going to want to add her to your PLN, that is, your professional learning network. I feel like I struck gold when I met Heidi. She's a fourth grade teacher in Bartlett, Tennessee, who loves sharing innovative activities and ideas. You can find lots of them on her blog, which is Mrs. Samuelson's Swamp Frogs. She is also the co-moder of the Global Math Task Twitter Challenge, which helps to connect students in the area of math. And she's going to tell you all about that today. And so you can join in the fun and share some of these math task strategies on Twitter. And she also invites you to tweet her students. They are, and I'll be sharing all of these links in there in the live binder. They are the Swamp Frog Kids. And Heidi also, you'll, you won't be surprised by this at all, considers herself a techie nerd type of person. I think that applies to many of us in this webinar. And she also loves dabbling in augmented reality with learning. So you may see her in some of those meetings. So with that, I would like to say welcome to Heidi. Ask her to answer our newbie question and take it away. Well, thanks, Peggy. I really appreciate that. I, I truly enjoyed um, connecting with you this summer. Not at ISTE is, is a passion of mine, and someday I plan on getting there to actually be a live um, person there. So the newbie question is, um, why is it important to be a connected educator? And to me, um, being a connected educator just means that I'm no longer alone in my quest to be the best that I can for my students. So I use my PNL or my PLN, my personal learning network, to help me find different resources and share different things that are working for my struggling students, but not just my struggling students. I also reach out to find ways to advance and um, enhance the learning of my advanced students. So my e-friends on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and throughout um, Twitter chats like um, Fourth, the fourth chat and teacher friends are uh, wonderful ways for me to connect and learn new things to help my students. And one of the um, educators that I follow, uh, George Kuros, is um, he's he's 
known for his quote of, isolation is now a choice educators make. If you feel alone, it's because you're not willing to connect. So I really encourage everyone to try that connection and see how well it, um, it helps you out. So this is my first time using Blackboard, and I'm, I'm going to try making it the best of it. And I appreciate Peggy helping me um, do a little preview of it and get familiar with it. So um, just starting, this uh, is a clickable slide show that I've created. Um, there's a lot of hype right now about uh, hyperdocs and uh, Google Docs that are hyperlinked and have hyperlinks in them. So I think if I use this, that'll help me. Um, I hope you can see this. This little uh, bit.ly link right here will allow you to download a copy of the slides that I'm going to be going through and um, be able to click on those slides, as well as the live binder that Peggy has put together. And I really appreciate all the wonderful things that she has added. Um, I do have a lot of links in these slides, so I appreciate all her work. and and time and effort in, in getting those into the live binder. Alice Keeler is a wonderful educator that is, is a fabulous person to follow as well. And she says that um, good teachers can't be replaced by tech. What tech does is allow teachers to spend more time focusing on their learners and building those relationships. And that's what um, my goal in using technology in the classroom is, not to have the kids just sit on a piece of technology using it for mundane things that you can do with paper and pencil, but to enhance their learning and get them um, moving in the direction of creation. So this, um, again, is, is a clickable um, webinar uh, uh, Google slide link. So uh, the only difference between I'm a techie and I'm not a techie is the willingness to click on stuff and see what happens. So please feel free to click away and let me know if you have any questions about any of the links. And again, here's the bit.ly link if you would like a copy of these to download and go back through. And again, I believe um, Peggy has it in the live binder as well, which I totally appreciate. So the goal here is to provide you some resources to help you get connected and to share your learning. And one of my most effective tools for connecting to share the learning is not just Twitter, not just Skype, Seesaw and Remind are two of my favorite things to connect the learning. Um, and why would you connect? Because all of us are smarter than just one of us. And I love being able to learn from other people. If you're not already using Remind with your classroom, this is a communication application. Um, you can use it on all different types and formats, from iTunes to Google Play to just a website, to be able to connect um, with your students and your parents. Um, it was formerly called Remind 101, and um, probably about three or four years ago, they changed it to just Remind. Uh, Remind lets educators send quick, simple messages to parents on any device, and it also keeps my information as a teacher private. So even though parents feel like I'm actually texting them, they're not actually um, having access to my personal phone number. There are some new things on Remind, like uh, now you have the ability to choose how you want to send a message. So you can choose when you're creating a message to send it to the entire class, just a couple individuals, or just a really small group of people that you just need to get that information out to. Um, you can choose now to either have one-way communication where you are totally just sending out reminders as text um, reminders, or you can open up a two-way communication where parents can actually start a conversation and ask you a question. So there is a, a setting that you want to make sure if you're going to do that two-way setting communication that you set your office hours. It doesn't prevent the student or the parent from sending you a text even when you're not 
uh, in your office hours, but it does give them notification that they are trying to contact you outside of your office hours. You can also, this is one of my favorite things, is I take just five minutes of my planning period and I schedule things that are going to go out in Remind and then they go out and I, like, they, it's, I'm like, oh, hey, I remembered to send that because I scheduled it ahead of time. So, for instance, we had our grandparents' breakfast this, um, this week with our students. I was able to schedule that back at the beginning of August because I knew it was coming up and it just sent that remind on the specified time and date that I scheduled it for. Another um, great opportunity is if you have ELL students or students that have parents that might not speak really well the, um, with the English language, you can have that translated for them. If they're using the app on their phone, they can definitely translate that to any language that they would might be able to understand a lot better. And I've had several parents over the last couple of years that have been um, really uh, appreciative of that new feature with Remind. Additionally, I find that uh, adding an attachment, um, instead of printing out the handouts and sending them with students, I can send a PDF or I can send a picture of something that's getting home and the parents appreciate being able to get that picture in their Remind so that they can actually look at it and find it um, in their student's backpack. Because even in fourth grade, sometimes things don't get all of the time turned into parents. So some other things that Remind is working with right now is being able to coordinate activities and um, then have those parents click back on and saying yes, they're coming or no, they're not coming. You can now share your classes with co-owners. So um, my co-teacher and I uh, have the jog club at our school. So we together can uh, both remind and send out texts to the job club uh, participants. And then you can also go into your settings and have those announcements on a widget that is um, sent uh, to your blog and you're able to get those widgets on your blog post or on your website so that parents that might not have that ability to see it on a phone can now see it on your blog and they're able to see what's going on in your mind class. Um, if you're not familiar with Tabitha Caro, she's a wonderful educator. She's a fourth grade teacher and she does a lot of work with Google Slides. And she has come up with a way of embedding the Google Slide into her website so that she can do most of the changing of the Google Slide on her phone. But she also has that Google Slide created and then sends a picture of what is on that Google Slide so that most phones will be able to uh, open the picture, maybe not the actual link to the Google Slide, but the picture. And again, there's a, a link that will send you to her information and she has a whole demo showing you how to do that particular um, way of sending parents information on Remind. Again, also remember now that um, Remind has uh, given you the opportunity to chat with your parents and parents can now chat with you. So you definitely want to go into your settings and you want to look at your chat and you want to make sure that you are setting your office hours. It's not going to give parents the inability to text you during their off hours, but it will send them a little note that says, hey, you know, this isn't during the office hours, are you sure you want to send this text? And if I remember correctly, if I wanted to share, I'm going to go um, uh, share my screen with you so that you can hopefully see a little bit about um, what it looks like on the settings. There's something new that has just come up. So if I'm in the Remind classroom, this is my settings for my class. If I click on the settings tab, 
it's going to bring up the information that will tell me the class name, which I can change, or my class code, which I can change. And then this is a new thing that has just come up on the Remind, which allows anyone that is a participant in your class to be able to see and message each other. So if I were to toggle that on, the, the teachers and the parents and the children that are in this class for tech are able to contact each other through the app or through the texting. So I, that's not a setting that I particularly care to have on, especially with my classroom. So all you need to do is just toggle that off, and that will automatically save the um, new settings so that uh, your participants are not able to see uh, what's going on or who is else is in your classroom or contact those other people. Okay. So, that's why I think I'm uh, trying to see the whole classroom live and I'm only seeing part of it. Let me see if I do yeah. Nope, there we go. Let me turn the sharing off and get back here. I hope this is working. Yay, that works. Okay, so I hope that made um, sense. Uh, and that's just something new that I've just learned within the last two weeks that Remind is doing. And I kind of wanted to let everybody know that that ability is out there because it automatically allows um, your participants to contact one another. It's a, definitely a setting that you have to go in and um, turn off. There are four ways to fill your Remind class. So simply getting text messages um, is just like texting 81010 with your personal um, classroom code. Or you can have your participants um, actually go on to the rmd.me, click join a class, and type in your code to join. Or you could actually send an invitation to those parents or have them automatically joined by you filling out this information and that will automatically add them into your classroom. So don't do that without having permission from the parents first. Um, but that is a way of getting uh, emails in there or phone numbers. And then the last way is by having them actually download the app which is a free app on the Google and the um, iTunes store. And you can actually have them join your class just by clicking and entering your code there. The next um, communication app that I love using is Seesaw Class. I started using it two years ago just very uh, lightly with my second graders. And then when I moved up to fourth grade, we really started getting into using this um, last year. And I, my students last year said CFO class is kind of like um, Facebook, only in a safe environment. And it really does. They, um, they have um, different ways of being able to share information on Seesaw that their parents can see and that they can see. Um, Seesaw is free and will always be free, but if you use this bit.ly link, um, you can check out the new Seesaw Plus that's coming, and I'll talk a little bit more about what is Seesaw Plus and why you might want to try it out for free. Um, Seesaw Plus is a paid portion of the program, but Seesaw itself will always stay free. <coughs> Excuse me. Seesaw is an online journal, and this is what, if, you're, if you log into your Seesaw account, this is what the students see. This is called the class feed um, version. Um, and this is where students get to take pictures. Um, there's uh, six different ways that they can share information with other people. So they can share a photo. They can take a video. They can draw something. They can upload a file that they've created on their computer. They can make a note or they can share a link. And all of those are available for the students to um, be able to upload into their journal, as well as you as the teacher upload into your journal or a journal that you um, have created. I always have my dog that has a journal on our classroom. 
so that the kids can see how the dog is, is uh, performing in our class. Um, there are several things. When you upload a picture, you have the ability to um, add a caption to that picture. You have the ability to draw in that picture. And then you also have the ability to add auto to that picture. So the students are drawing on their photos. They're um, adding captions to their photos. And then they're sharing that out, not only with each other, but also with connected parents. So I am, as the teacher, I have the ability to connect a parent with their child's learning journal so that the parents are seeing what the students are learning and how they are expressing their knowledge about a skill each day. So there's no more going home and saying, oh, what did you do in school today, honey? There's this new kind of conversation that says, Hey, John, I saw that you added in a picture of your poster that you designed today. Can you tell me more about what you learned and how you put that poster together? And that becomes a new table talk for the parents. Also, one of the things that I love about Seesaw is that you as the teacher have the ability to share out information of what's going on in your classroom with uh, Twitter, with Facebook, with Google Plus, and with Pinterest. Um, I also can take that link and I can send it out through Remind. And that's something that when I do the, Google, the, the Global Math Pass Twitter Challenge, a lot of times students will use this ability to create a photo or to write on their photo. And then I can share out their task using this link that Seesaw gives me, which is um, a protected link. So you can go in and you can see what my students have done, but you can't actually click on it to comment on their information unless you're a connected parent. Another thing that the students can see is not just class feed, which is right here. They can also see a calendar. So you can toggle through the calendar and see how many items have been added to their journals. And as a teacher, if I wanted to be able to go in and see the assignment that I assigned on March the 30th, I can see 22 items were added. I can click on that particular date and see all of the items that were added and give an idea of whether they understood what was going on or didn't understand what was going on during that time. I can also, as a teacher, create folders for students to put their work into. And so back on that page where you have the ability to look at uh, a class feed or a class calendar, I can also check out folders and look for uh, work that has been put into the uh, class kick folder or the fairy tale writing or the math group folder so that I can see how those students are sharing their learning during those folders. Here's that Seesaw Plus, which is um, something new that Seesaw has just rolled out this year. And this gives you some, um, some of the different things that you can actually do with Seesaw Plus. You can actually create private folders. Um, you can uh, tag skills and add skills into the different things that students are adding into their Seesaw. And you can also add private notes that you might want to uh, remind yourself that I need to talk to the student about this because on that assignment they weren't um, really understanding what I was trying to get them to understand. Um, again, you can try Seesaw Free Plus for free for a month just by using this bit.ly link or scanning this QR code. But Seesaw itself is free. The app is free. The parent communication portion of it is free. Um, just if you wanted to be able to go in and do all this private stuff and add key skills are in the plus section. And so I'm going to take you out um, just one more uh, time to our seesaw. Um, this is uh, one of the things that I love about Seesaw as a teacher, we had just finished taking notes on the parts of the cell. And so I was showing the students how they could uh, 
go back into Seesaw and show their parents at home through their Parent Connect the different things that they were learning. And so we created this video, which I'm not going to show you the video at this time, but if you, um, if you have any questions about it, I'll be happy to share it with you. Uh, but this is just a quick video of a student talking about we took notes on parts of cells. We learned that there are different vocabulary words that we have to know for the different parts of cells. We took notes about the different parts of cells. And then the video also goes in to uh, show in the actual notebook where students and parents can see what's going on in our notes. So that now parents have um, this notification that this is coming through on their child's folder. So if I were to go into Anderson's folder, as Anderson's parent, I can see anything and everything that Anderson has put into his folder. But I can't see Bailey's folder. And I can't see Connor's folder. And then as a parent, I can also like or make comments about what Anderson is adding into his folder. Um, and then Anderson can see that I've liked it. So you can see these little hearts, kind of like on Facebook when you get a like or um, a comment to let you know, um, like this parent, this was a, something that was shared with everyone. So this parent was not really sure about what we were learning about. So I was able to go in and answer that parent's question. So really engaging, really um, helpful in getting the parents to see what is going on uh, in the, the different um, ways. I'm trying to figure out how I would like to stop sharing. There we go. OK, I'm getting the hang of this, I think. So that is one of my new favorite apps. And if you need more information on Seesaw, it, uh, it's a, an app that will work on iTunes, or uh, I'm sorry, it'll work on Apple products, um, iPhoto, or iPhones, iPods, iPads. It works on desktops. It works on, um, I believe, uh, Amazon has it available through the Kindle. So this is one of those apps that is just way um, versatile. You can use it on many different things. And I've included this link to a YouTube video that Seesaw has on how to get the, uh, the class set up and get the students into the, um, the Seesaw class. Uh, Seesaw also provides a wonderful teacher resource center. So if you were to click on any of these tutorials, they walk you through um, different uh, introduction, introducing Seesaw to your students, sharing it with parents, um, different activities that you might want to use with your students. Um, and then there's also a sample parent consent waiver form that you might want to um, use that. Um, this was a Padlet that was created by Julie Jacobs, and she gave me permission to share it. If you're working with um, 7th through 12th graders, she has a collection of different ideas and ways that she is using Seesaw with those um, upper grades to help them uh, share their learning and connect to show you what they've created. And then she has also created one for the elementary um, students. And so she has this Padlet where you can just click on the different um, activities and ideas. And you can uh, find out some more information about ways to use Seesaw and projects that you can use. It is one of the most versatile apps that I have found. And my students actually come up with ideas and ways that they want to share what they've just learned so that they can put it on to Seesaw, so not only that their parents can see it, but that they can also see what other students are learning, because they get to like and share with each other in the classroom. Um, Seesaw is also committed to uh, helping us out. So they have some PD and PJ sessions. And if you uh, click on this link, you can uh, sign up for a webinar for uh, 
different topics. Um, there's three through five sessions. There are kindergarten sessions. There are first grade sessions. And if you miss the session, the bonus is that they're all recorded. So there's a link for the recording so that you can see their different, um, different sessions. So um, for those of you that are the Twitter people in the, the session, Twitter in the classroom helps me get my students learning and growing and sharing with others. I use it as an authentic form of communication. We talk a lot about um, it's a formal type of communication, so we want to make sure that we are speaking politely, that we are using words that are able to be understood by many different um, students from all over the globe, and then it helps them realize that they are not alone in their learning, that there are people all over the globe that are learning similar ideas, and that they can share with those learners, and they can grow from people not just in the classroom, not just down the hallway, but um, people that are in a different state or a different country. Kayla Delzer is a wonderful resource on using Twitter in the classroom, and she is definitely who I first got started with um, the idea with. And she has uh, several articles. She writes for the Edudemic, so you might be able to see some of the links here and click on those and read more about the benefits of using Twitter in the classroom. One of the main things that I use Twitter for with my classroom is the Global Math Task Twitter Challenge. And um, about three, two or three years ago, I connected with a friend in North Carolina. Her name is Beverly Ladd, and she is an awesome um, teacher of second grade. And at that time, I was teaching second grade, and we were trying to figure out a way to connect our students to share math learning. And so during that year, we would get together on Twitter, and the kids would share out a task or two. And um, we also got together over Skype, and the kids would uh, collaboratively write um, different um, fairy tales. And last year, we uh, decided that we wanted to take it a little bit farther. And so we created this thing called the Global Math Test Twitter Challenge. And it was fabulous last year. We had a lot of connectivity between kindergartners all the way up through high school. And um, you can see some of the different uh, student connections. You know, like it, they love solving problems that other students had um, challenged them to solve. But they, even more than solving problems, they loved connecting to share some tasks that they had created and finding out how different students uh, would solve those in different countries. Um, so ways that you can share the, the global math task with your students is um, searching on that search task bar for the Twitter hashtag of your grade level. So we've created hashtags for kindergarten, for first grade, second grade, third grade, fourth grade, and fifth grade. And then we have a section on our spreadsheet that will allow um, middle school and high school teachers to connect with each other. But we found last year that middle school and high school teachers are so uh, departmentalized and so specific in their math learning that it was easier for them to connect with each other than for us to try and tweet out a challenge. So you do a search, and um, you find a task. And this classroom has put out the task that says, I have six cookies. My friend has three cookies. Do I have more cookies than my friend? And how do you know? And you can tell this is a kindergarten task because it has that K at the end of the GMTTC. And so you can just type out an answer. So as a class, you can get together and answer it with just words. But you always want to remember to have that hashtag in your answer so that anybody that's searching for a challenge can find not only the challenge, but they can find how you solved it and see if they have a different way of solving it. You could also um, do that search and find your grade band level and then um, take a picture. So this was a picture of how the students we're answering our question, and um, this is actually a class in Germany. And this 
picture led to a tremendously wonderful discussion in my classroom about what is this dot and what are, how, why are they using a table with, um, it looks like a tic-tac-toe board. And so we were able to communicate back with this classroom, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And they were um, so generous into describing about how they were solving and what their solutions were and how they were doing different things. And it became a really, um, it became a, a, a great resource for us to learn new things in ways that are, uh, people are solving math tasks in different countries as well as different um, areas of the state. If you do a search, you could always, as a teacher, make a copy of the task and then um, post that copy up on your um, bulletin board or project it using your projector and have your students use just paper and pencil. And then you can take a picture of their solution and tweet it back out so that everybody that's looking at that problem can see the different solutions that are coming away from that problem. Um, this teacher uses Google Docs and so she posted the um, math task on Google Docs and then different teachers were taking um, snapshots of that task and having students glue it into their interactive notebook and completing the problem or the task in the interactive notebook in different ways and talking about different ways of uh, solving that task. And then when they shared it back out, they just took pictures of their interactive notebook and they shared that back out, always using the hashtag level so that you can always find the solutions and the problems. And then another way, I love this way too, is um, if you search for a task and then uh, you come up with your solution, students can make a video to describe their uh, thinking behind how they solve the problem. And Twitter will allow you to um, share that video back out. Again, make sure that you have the hashtag because if you don't have the hashtag, people that are searching for your videos and your solutions and your tasks won't be able to find them. This is one of my favorite things. Um, this again is another class that was challenging, um, challenging uh, the math tasks. And I'm, I'm, it's a, it's a YouTube video. I would take you out and show it to you, but I'm, I'm afraid that um, it might not work. But the, the whole question was, why do three spiders make four beetles? And as you watch this stop. Um, it's a stop motion video that this classroom in Germany has created. Um, the shoes will start moving around and the spiders will go away and beetles will form. And then you'll see that these um, four shoes add on to the three and three of each beetle. And so we kind of got a little bit of the German as well as how they're learning English. And then we learned a little bit more about stop motion movies. So that was kind of a cool way of learning with that global math task Twitter challenge. And then you, you truly and honestly can have students, um, this child was working on a, a Google Doc or a Google PowerPoint, uh, Google Slides, and just taking a picture of that and sharing that back out so that you can see the thinking and the learning that's going on. We, um, we really would love to have you join us in the Math Task Twitter Challenge. This is a link, a Google link, that will take you to the spreadsheet. Um, and I'm sure that that's going to be um, shared in the live binder. And uh, you certainly don't have to do a, a sharing of the task. You can certainly answer questions as well as share them out just by searching in the Twitter bar and you just uh, search for the hashtag of your grade band level and it'll come up with different things that you can use. Um, again, here's the search bar and you just do your hashtag GMTTC and then what your grade band level is. The spreadsheet is available for everybody to look at and to see who's tweeting and who's uh, sharing out tasks during the week and we encourage you to follow those classrooms. We're working on a uh, way of sending those out right now. And if you go to the Global Math Task blog, um, you'll see uh, some of our Twitter areas. We have our Twitter feed that's on there and our Remind feed that's on the blog. And you'll be able to get more information about Global Math Task through the blog. Um, searching for a task helps focus on keywords and main ideas. 
So if you're teaching your kids to look for global math task Twitter challenge and then adding that grade level, um, this is just a quick YouTube video that um, was created to help you kind of see how you could find those tasks for your students to uh, tweet out. And then we've added a new challenge this year based on the game of 24, which is a card game that we play here in the United States. The students are challenged to use these four numbers and only these four numbers with addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division to come up with an equation that would equal 24. So for instance, um, students might do 2 times 4 is 8. Um, yeah, well, I guess that one works. You can see how they're, they're like 2, 2 plus 4 is 6, 2 plus 4 is 6. 6 times 6 is 36. So there's a lot of conversation that goes on with the students. And I truly and honestly am so nervous right now, I can't even tell you how I would solve this. But I know that the students would have a great time of trying to figure out how can we add these together? How can we multiply these together? How can we add or multiply, subtract or divide to come up with the equation that would equal 24? And there's a lot of um, new uh, classrooms that are joining in the challenge. I know Canada has joined in this last week. And we've had uh, classrooms from Illinois and Indiana that are taking part in the challenge as well. And this truly and honestly is one that can be done from kindergarten all the way up through high school. If you don't teach math, how in the world can you uh, get into a, a Global Math Task Twitter challenge, well, there's also the Global Read Aloud. Or September 15th is coming up with Dot Day. If you're not familiar with the book called The Dot, there's um, Dot Day coming up on September 15th. There are so many ways to connect your classrooms with Twitter. But let's say you're not uh, into the whole, let's join in a whole group, let's get in together with all these people. Just find one teacher. Um, the most valuable resource that teachers have is each other. So if you just find that one teacher that you feel comfortable with and start testing the waters. That's what Beverly and I did uh, that two or three years ago. And it's just exploded since then. So I truly um, encourage you to just try that one person that you feel comfortable trying out uh, different ideas with. Um, Mystery Skype is another way that I connect my students to share their learning. And this is a YouTube video um, that you can watch and see how Mystery Skype really does transform these students into thinkers, into uh, questioners. Um, it's put on through uh, the Skype community. So you can use this Google um, URL code right here to find more mystery Skypes. But students start off by playing rock, paper, scissors. And they develop their mapping skills by asking yes or no questions to the classroom that's on the other side of the Skype. We had our very first mystery Skype this um, week with my students. And they were, I mean, they're absolutely hooked. They cannot wait to do another mystery Skype and determine where that classroom is fun. Um, it connects the students globally. Last year, we were able to uh, Skype with a classroom from India. And they got to see the different culture, um, cultural music. They got to see cultural costumes. And they learned that they could ask questions and find out information um, about ways that they're the same and ways that they're different. Um, not only that, but uh, it, it develops that critical thinking. If you ask the classroom that you're Skyping with if um, they're east of the Mississippi River and they respond with no, then that gives the students that um, ability to say, okay, wait, they said no, which states am I going to get rid of then? Because they absolutely positively can't be in these states. And then now that I know these states are not where they're at, what questions can I ask that are yes or no questions that will help me narrow down where these students are located? 
And um, it, it, was, it was really interesting to watch the students this week as they were communicating, um, learning respectful ways of communicating by saying, you know, yes, we are, or no, we're not, um, using complete sentences, using complete thoughts. Um, it was it was really interesting to watch them grow, and I can't wait for the next mystery Skype, which is coming up next week. So they will grow even more. But if you don't want a mystery Skype with somebody to <coughs> discover location, you can always mystery Skype with someone to develop fluency. Um, my students read with my mother almost every day of the week. She has a book, and my student has a book, and they use Skype to communicate and read that book. And my mother uses comprehension questions that she's asking my students to um, further their uh, reading and their thinking and help them connect and not just read words, but actually connect to what's going on with the illustrations as well as with what the author is saying. Another um, way that we use Skype is by using our favorite tool, which is Kahoot. Um, if you're not familiar with Kahoot, it's an online game, um, kind of like, uh, um, I'm trying to think of, of how I could, it, it's, it's a, you get a question, you have four answers, and you have a certain amount of time for the students to answer those questions. And so we actually use Skype and do a screen share with several students or classes around the country. Um, and then we play the game with them. Uh, when I uh, had my second graders, we actually got up to 100 different participants in the game. And so, we, again, we were playing math skill games. And they were um, challenging the other classrooms to see who could answer the equations the fastest and who knew the answers to the tasks the fastest. Um, this is uh, this this slide has many different links on how to put together your own Kahoot, how to search for Kahoots that are already created on a skill that you are using, and then there's also this lovely um, free uh, TPT product that you can download, and students can then begin creating their own Kahoot challenges, and they do it on paper and pencil. And uh, I look over it, and then I will start designing their Kahoots to share out with other classrooms. So Kahoot is definitely one of my uh, favorite uh, resources to use as a review and a pre-assessment. Um, this uh, slide has Anita Goodwin's uh, blog post linked to it, where she will um, give you a step-by-step how to create a Kahoot game. Can't be any easier. I promise you, she has it broken down beautifully. Um, another engaging tools that I like to use to help my students share, um, again, I like them to be able to create. So one of the uh, creation tools that I like to use is called Buncee. And it's available on iTunes as well as Google Play. And I think you can also use it on the web. Um, Bensi for EDU allows you to create slides, and those slides have the ability for you to click on links and go out in research information. So students um, were creating a project or completing an assignment on Ronald Dahl. And so if you think about Google Slides or PowerPoint, this is just another type of um, resource for students to create. Uh, information uh, to share out about what they're learning. And you can see here um, that the student has created three different uh, slides to go with their presentation. And they can take this presentation and add the link to this presentation to Seesaw. And then their parents can click on the link, or other students can click on the link, and they can actually see what's going on in their project that they've completed. This was a Buncee project where the student was actually creating a story. So in Buncee, you're actually able to draw. You're actually able to add stickers, backgrounds. And then this little thing right here allows you to add your own voice. There's also a component where you can add that the computer reads it. But having them read it gives them the ability to share their expression and their fluency of their own writing. 
And again, you can see the different slides here in this presentation. Students finish their interactive stories and then put that link to the story onto their Seesaw account and they, um, then share it out with their parents. This is actually a Buncee that was created by a teacher who wanted her students to use this Buncee to kind of preload what they were going to learn about the sun. And so each one of these links will take the students out into a uh, website or a slideshow or a movie that she wants them to look at. And you can see it has like six different pages that she's having them go through. She can um, put the link to this assignment into their Seesaw journal. Students can go into their journal, click on the link, and then just go right into the assignment from there. So Buncee, is, is, uh, Buncee EDU is one of my new favorite things to use with the students. And of course, how do you um, attach that to Global Math Test Twitter Challenge? Students can use a background that's already created in Buncee, and then the stickers to stick on there, and then add text to add into what their question might be for that task. And then you can take a screenshot of this picture from Buncee and share that out on Global Math Test Twitter. Or you can click the link and share it out on Global Math Test Twitter, or you can actually add this into their Seesaw account and click the link on Seesaw and share that out via Twitter. Another thing I like to use Buncee for is um, when I'm giving presentations. I like to go in. Buncee has a ton of educational backgrounds, and you can add your create um, motivational uh, quotes um, and add those into the pre loaded backgrounds and share those out with the participants or with your students. Another one of uh, the things that um, Jonah has, or Joanna, I'm sorry, has created uh, is that she goes in and uses the backgrounds. And this was a kindergarten, I believe, it, it was a kindergarten project where she had preloaded the letters into the background and saved this as a picture and then uploaded it into Seesaw, and the students were able to copy and then write right on top of her background to fill in their uh, poetry for um, spring. So that's just one of the ways that we can app smash Buncee PowerPoint and uh, Seesaw class to share the learning and help students create, even as young as kindergartners. Another one of my new uh, finds this summer is Adobe. Um, I was watching uh, Tony Vincent, uh, one of his uh, Periscopes, and he was talking about the app Adobe. And um, when you go to the Adobe website, you can actually see that there's several different ways that you can create Adobes. Um, another person that has talked about Adobe on uh, Periscope is Cami Butterfield, which uh, both Tony Vincent and Cami Butterfield are fabulous educators to follow, not only on Twitter but on Periscope. And um, this is actually a hyper doc that will allow you to see all of the different shares that Cami uses in her third grade classroom to uh, help her students share their learning with Adobe Spark Post. Uh, Adobe allows you to, to like take a picture. So this is a picture from my husband's run across the country. And it was just the words that just made me think about him. Uh, you know, like you have the ability to do something, you have the motivation to do it, and then the attitude is what gets it done. And so just sharing out, um, you know, like students could create different things, uh, a book character, and different character traits that go along with that book character. Another thing with Adobe is that you can create an actual uh, web page. Uh, students are learning about different things on the web page, and if you click on this Adobe Spark uh, link, you can actually go and see this web page. And as, as you scroll up and down the web page, it will show links and pictures and movies and videos that are so easy to attach into this web page. Students that are learning about uh, explorers next week are going to learn how to create a web page using those explorers and the information that they're gathering from the explorers. So Adobe Sparks are two easy to use um, different uh, web tools. 
Another thing that my students enjoyed last year was called SingLink. SingLink is available on iTunes, Google Play, and I believe you can also create things on the website for this. Students upload a picture, and then with that picture, they are able to uh, put little hot spots onto the picture. So wherever you see these little targets, they have actually linked another picture or a website or a video of an explanation about what's going on. So for instance, in this particular thing link of the cell, every time you see a target, that student has gone in and identified what that target is uh, targeted at. For instance, the cell wall or the cell membrane or the mitochondria or the cytoplasm. Um, and they can video things on the iPad and upload those into their ThingLink account and then attach them on. On the web, I think you can only do um, links or pictures. I'm not sure about videos on the web. So um, ThingLink is really uh, one of the things that my students last year loved using. This year, they're just now starting to get introduced to it. Pick Collage is available on iTunes and Google Play, um, and you can get those downloads from the website. However, you cannot create things on the website for Pick Collage. Uh, Pick Collage allows a student, um, for instance, he was my Seesaw student of the day, and we were going to see this author in an author show at our school. So he had the iPad with him and was taking pictures of the different things that he thought was an important thing to share back and share about our day. And then using Pic Collage, he chose the background, he chose a template, and he was able to add all of these pictures into the template as well as add in a little sticky note to share, um, you know, like his words and thoughts for what was going on. And then we were able to take this Pic Collage and we were able to share it out on Twitter and we tagged this author and then she um, responded back to the student of the day and shared her um, appreciation of his hard work. Uh, also, when you're Skyping, you can have a student of the day take pictures and add those into Pic Collage and create Pic Collage pictures. Um, you can also use the picture that created in Pic Collage and then add that into ThingLink and then add more links and connectivity into ThingLink. Um, and then again, share it out on Twitter or share it out onto your Seesaw and then connect students to share the learning even farther. Here's another um, way of students have added on, like just taking a quote, ability is what you're capable of doing, motivation determines what you do, and attitude determines how well you do it. And taking those quotes and talking about them and adding them into their learning using Adobe Sparks, using ThingLink, using Pic Collage. I would love to connect with you and help you share your learning. So I have all these connected um, areas and ways that you can get in touch with me. Um, I would love to connect with you over the Global Math Test Twitter Challenge, but we also love uh, connecting with Skype. So I hope you'll reach out and let me know the ways that we can share. I truly believe that we do hold the power to unleash creativity in our students. And with that power comes really a, a great responsibility. We are there to facilitate their learning experiences and to help put those students into the driver's seat. And if you're interested in more about that kind of thinking, the, tech, the Two Techie Teachers blog post is linked here and really shares some great ideas on how you can share how I learn and how you can share creation and creativity with your students. If you're interested in creating QR codes, I have a little um, demo of how I get my students using email to connect with me. Um, they're actually emailing me from my email account and they scan this QR code into the iPad that they're using and then write a sample paragraph or a sample letter to me that I can then go back through and add into their CFL journal and give comments on. If you need help um, setting up a Twitter account, please check this uh, hyperlinked Google Doc uh, and see if there's any type of um, information that might be helpful to you. 
And again, I'm, I'm more than happy to connect with you and help you out. Cami Butterfield is, um, I wanted to share her information because she has been like a wealth of information for me and has actually introduced me to many of the things that I have shared with you today. And I just wanted to give her a shout out because I really truly appreciate all that she does to share with teachers. And I, can, I, would, be, I would not be doing my job if I didn't share with you digital citizenship resources because not only am I teaching my students to be good citizens in the classroom, I also need to make sure that they are good digital citizens. And these are some links as some of the different things that I use in my classroom with my students to help them understand more about their role as a digital citizen. Um, please, 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 please connect to share because alone we're smart, but together I know we can be really brilliant. And I so look forward to sharing more with you this year. Thank you so much for letting me be a part of your day today. And please let me know if there's anything that I can help you with. Thanks so much, Heidi. I did capture some questions as we went, and some of them have been answered. Um, this goes back to Remind. Do you actually see the picture or PDF in Remind in your mobile device, or do you have to click on the link to see it? Um, that depends upon how the, the person is getting the text. If they're just getting text, Mm -hmm. They will actually have to click on the uh, link to actually see the picture. But mm -hmm. if they're actually getting it through the, um, the app, they'll see it. Okay. When you have iPads, can you upload projects from other apps like Book creator to seesaw. It depends upon how that project is saved. Mm -hmm. So I know um, seesaw will allow you to update or upload uh, photos. I can mm -hmm. upload PDFs. Um, like for instance, uh, this week we were reading the book Fireflies, and I went in and created uh, the various pages that I wanted to focus on in a Google slide. Mm -hmm. and then I made that Google slide into a PDF. I could upload the PDF. I'm not, I, I think Book Creator can be saved as a PDF, and then you would be able to upload the PDF, but as an actual book that you would uh, search through, I'm not, uh, I'm not going to say yes or no, I'm not certain about that. Okay, it, it probably takes some trial and error. Um, yes, ma'am. Have you figured out how to embed a YouTube video on Seesaw and prevent the related videos from showing up after the video plays? You can actually use a, um, a, a system, it's a, a website called Safe Share mm -hmm. TV, and you can use, like I can click on the link for the video, put it into SafeShare, and then upload that link of SafeShare to Seesaw, which mm -hmm. will only play that video. Unfortunately, in our district, YouTube is blocked from our students, yeah. so um, the link would only be active at home with their parent app. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, what are your favorite apps to do app smashing with Seesaw? Uh, my, my favorite, favorite, favorite is Explain Everything. Mm -hmm. However, that is a paid app at this mm -hmm. time. Um, EduCreations works similar to uh, Explain Everything, but uh, is free. But I, I, again, I love uh, Doodle Buddies, um, Kit Collage, uh, anything where the students can add multiple things like a picture, drawing, audio, video, anything that that they can add all of those things in to get all of their information shared out, I will use. Mm -hmm. Can students create their own folders inside Seesaw? Not to my knowledge. Folders are something okay. that you have control over. Okay. 
What's the QR code creator that lets you use images in the QR code background? There must have been examples on the slides. Um, that's actually me just taking a QR code and putting it into a, a PowerPoint slide mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then um, and putting a picture on top of it. Oh. And I believe on a QR code you can cover up to 10 or 20 percent of the QR code and it still reads the QR code. Oh, okay. Those were the questions that I was able to capture. Um, so I think we can wrap up for today. Uh, thanks so much, Heidi. I think everybody agreed it was a uh, you did a, a wonderful presentation today, and I'm going to pass the mic over to Peggy, who will tell us about what's coming up. Thank you so much, Heidi. Our brains are spinning, and I'm so glad we have all those resources available in our live binder so everyone can go back and spend more time exploring them later. We want to invite all of you to come back and join us again next week. We have another terrific presenter. Laura Krenicki is going to be doing some great things with global literacy and geography. So I know you're going to enjoy that. On September 24th, we have an excellent presentation on assistive technology for struggling readers with Mike Murata. And that would apply to all students. Any students who are struggling readers will benefit from his tips. And then on October 1st, we have Karen Lerman and Kristen Wydeen coming back to join us to talk about ways to innovate with the iPad. So I hope you'll all come back and join us for that. The Learning Revolution Project is Steve Hargadon's latest. He's gathered all his PD resources in one place, including host your own webinar, where you can sign up for a Blackboard Collaborate session yourself. And as long as your session's public, it's free. As you exit the session, the survey should open in your browser. You can take the link from the chat box as well, or the link in the resources tab in the live binder to complete the survey. In the bottom of the survey, you can request a professional development certificate. And now your name prints out, thanks to Patty Ruffing. And thank you, Patty, for sending these out as well. And this is at the bottom of the survey for this request. Uh, make sure, though, when you put in the email address that it's a personal email and not a school email address. Schools tend to block this from getting to you. Spe special thanks to Heidi Samuelson, our special guest today, to Steve Hargadon, the founder of Classroom 2.0, Teacher 2.0, Future of Education, and the Learning Revolution to Blackboard Collaborate for our webinar platform, and to everyone who participated in the show today, thanks so much for coming.